Hello and welcome to another tutorial on the series of uh, kinematic vehicles. So this time we're going to create a motorbike. And let me show what we are going to put together. So we have a bike uh, uh, which we can drive and you will see that when we steer it will lean on its side. And then as you let uh, the button go, the steering button go, will come back in the straight position and you can drive it through the track. You can also see in this example there is a lap timer. Um, this allows us to make a simple game where we can uh, try to beat ourselves on the fastest lap in this track. Um, we will not implement this part in view of time, but you will find it in the project uh, which is linked in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so as usual, let's open the Epic Launcher. And under library, you will find an Unreal Engine will find your engines. And we're going to use uh, version 5 early access too, so let's launch it. And let's click on games and then take a blank project template. Let's call this kinematic bike and click create to create the project. As soon as the editor opens, let's dismiss this pop-up box about talking about the plugins. And then let's click on the player starter and click the press the delete key to remove it since we don't need it. Let's also click on the floor and make it larger. Let's say 50 by 50, uh, the X and the Y, we don't need to change the Z, which gives us a lot of room for our track. Maybe we need to make it even bigger. Then let's click on content uh, here in the content browser, uh, right click, and let's create a new folder, uh, calling it track just to keep things neat and organized. And then with this folder selected, we click import. And then we go under documents blender. That's where my blender files are. And let's select the racing track. Uh, this file is provided with uh, this project and it's uh, in the description below. So you will can download it and use it as well together also with the asset for the futuristic motorbike. So let's open it. Um, let's go with the standard options. So click import all. And once it's done compiling the shaders, we should see our racing track appearing here. Let's have a look in the static mesh editor. So this is the same track that we have used for the kinematic car project. Nothing new. Let's go back to our level. And let's drag the track inside the level. So we will uh, center it at zero, zero. And when it comes to height, let's see, you see, you can drag it down when it starts to disappear. Uh, I think that 20 is what we used last time. And I think it should be 20 also this time. So if we zoom out, this is what the track looks like in the level. Okay, so the track being ready, we can click uh, on content and then right click new folder. And let's create the folder for the bike asset. Uh, click import. And then you will find this uh, file also linked in the description below future motorbike open. And this time you will see it's a skeleton mesh and uh, I will show in a moment how it is rigged. So let's start, let's just take all the uh, default option and click import all. Just don't bother with uh, uh, these warnings, those are fine. And in a moment, as soon as the shaders have compiled, we have our futuristic motorbike. And let's open it and see how it looks like. Uh, 
we have three materials so but actually this is the same material uh, we can use in all three slots so we can adjust it in a moment and the reason it comes like this is uh, because of the technique that I'm using which I learned from Infencia so we can actually assign to all three slots the same material which is the 001 and then we can read get rid of the others. Now if we switch to the skeleton by using this button, uh, you will see that the bike has a root bone which sits down here and then uh, the rear wheel is actually rotating around its own axis as you can see here and uh, the front wheel on the other hand is connected to the steering. So we have a steering bone and the steering bone allows us to steer left and right and the wheel, the front wheel will steer with it. But the front wheel also needs to rotate because of movement. So that's exactly like it, the rear wheel does. Okay. Now once we rotate the steering, of course, since the two bones are parented, the wheel will rotate uh, around the rotated axis uh, because it's connected to the steering. So that all works. Let's uh, put it back as it should be. Just to be on the safe side. Well, actually, you could just disregard these changes, but uh, I like to put it back as it should be. Okay. So with this done, we can now start to uh, create our bike. Let's not forget that we can delete uh, these materials. So 0203 and the corresponding textures. Let's control select them, right click, delete and delete. Okay. And the motorbike still looks good because every slot is using any, the first material anyway. Okay, with this done, we are ready to uh, create our first blueprint. So in uh, other content, so right click new folder blueprints. And in the blueprints folder, we right click uh, blueprint class and let's choose spawn because we want to create an actor we can control. Let's call it BP motorbike. Why not? Then once it's created, double click to open it. And we want uh, now to adjust the hierarchy. So the first thing is to click on add and add the skeletal mesh. And remember that our bike is a skeletal mesh. So let's call this bike, for example. And then we take it and drag it onto the root so it will become the new root. With this done, let's move under mesh and select the future motorbike mesh. So we have our motorbike skeletal mesh as the root of the actor. And then with the, the root selected, we add also a spring arm. And if I spell it correctly, we're going to get a spring arm. And with the spring arm selected, add camera and we add a camera. Now let's click on the spring arm, drag it up a bit. I think this could be good vintage point. And then with the rotation tool selected, let's rotate the camera, maybe 10 or 15 degrees, I'll say 10 degrees. If you want to fine tune the rotation, you can click on uh, this tool here and then maybe set uh, five degrees increment and then we can rotate it to 50. Okay. Length of the spring arm is 300. Maybe we need to go a bit further. Let's try 500. And then let's click uh, on the actor here at the top and make sure that auto process is on player zero. Okay, that's auto process player. Okay, compile and save. We can already put our bike in the level. So from the content browser, I'm gonna drag it onto the level and maybe 
rotate it so that it's facing the track like this and actually we can already play and see how it looks like um, I think we need to make the spring arm slightly longer so escape to stop playing let's reopen the blueprint the spring arm we said 500 maybe what we can also do instead of making it longer now let's make it longer actually so with the spring arm selected we go under camera and target length and let's make it maybe 600 let's see how the 600 looks like so we compile and save everything close play again yeah that's slightly better even though we might want to lower it a bit but let's see um, how it looks once the bike can move now before we go in and start adding controls to, to our bike and also um, the code to handle its dynamics uh, there is something else that we want to do so let's uh, click on the bike folder and uh, uh, have a look at the physical asset and you see that the one that has been created by default it's not we what we would like it to be so let's uh, actually let's click on the root and then right click and choose delete all bodies below and this will get rid of all the physics bodies that were added automatically. Now we will click on this little gear and choose show all bones. And actually the only one we want to create is the one for the root. So let's uh, select the root and then we go here under tools on the right. And I think I'm going to choose a single convex hull and then click uh, add bodies. And this is the uh, physics body that's automatically being created for the body of the bike um, well we might actually do the same for the wheels so if I click on wheel rear and then control click on wheel front and then under tools let's choose this time a sphere and then add bodies so now we also have spheres as colliders for the two wheels okay and that's useful as we know also to know the radius of the wheels that we can use later for the animation part. Okay, let's save and close this part. And speaking of animation, let's uh, right click on the skeletal mesh and choose create anim blueprint. Let's keep it uh, with default name. And this is the animation blueprint that we will use later on to animate the bike, depending on the movement and the dynamics. At the moment we don't need it, so we can close. I'll remember to save all from time to time. It's actually a lot that we have not saved. And uh, we also need to save our map. So uh, we choose, uh, after having right clicked on content new folder, maps as usual, and let's call this one test map. And when you further develop this project, you can add your own maps as well in there. Okay, we are ready to edit actually the pawn blueprint. So let's open it. And we don't need the event actor begin overlap, so we can click and delete it. And the first thing that we want to do is uh, um, get the reference to the animation blueprint so that we can use it later on to pass on information to it. So what we want to do is drag a reference from the bike and then we will say get an instance. And if you have followed uh, my tutorial on the kinematic car, that's exactly the same. And now we're going to cast it to the future motorbike skeleton anim blueprint let's connect the execution pins and now we right click on the output variable and we say promote the variable and we're gonna call this uh, anim instance and actually it's a reference to the anim instance but for uh, clarity we're gonna use a shorter name Okay, so this is what we need to do uh, to get a reference to the animation blueprint that we can talk to later on. And now let's get into actually animating 
our bike. Now to animate our bike, of course, we need to handle the input from the player. So let's go under Edit, uh, Project Settings, and then scroll down to Input, which is under Engine. And let's add a uh, couple of axes. So I'm going to click on the little plus close to axis mappings. And uh, uh, the first input that we want to use is the throttle input. So this will control whether the bike moves forward and our bike will also be able to uh, move backward and reverse. Let's use uh, uh, as usual W for this one. So I'm clicking here on the little keyboard and then pressing W on the keyboard, which assigns the key. So then we press the plus again, click on the keyboard and we use the S for going backward. And let's remember to change the scale to minus one. And then let's click again on the plus uh, close to axis mappings. Let's call this one steer. And of course it will be uh, steering to the right. So we use the D key. And then with the plus, we can add the A key and change the scale to minus one. And this will allow us to steer to the left. So this is pretty much it for the bike. Uh, the other thing that we might want to do uh, in order to see how the bike is animating, uh, we want to add an axis, another axis, which we call you know, look up. And this one, we're going to assign it to the mouse Y. And then yet another axis, and we call this look right and we assign it to the mouse X. Okay, this is it for the inputs. So throttle, W is forward and S is backward. Steering or steer, D is right and A is left. And look up and look right, assign it respectively to mouse Y and mouse X. We're going to use to control the spring arm so we can pivot around our bike visually and see how it looks like. Let's close the inputs because we're done with that and we will come back to the event tick in a moment. Uh, down here, let's uh, uh, right click and type throttle. So we'll find our throttle axis event, which we just created. And then since we are at it, let's do the same thing with the steer and place the steer axis event, which we also just created. Okay, now with the input, uh, the axis value coming from throttle, we want to take it and multiply it by a variable, a float. So I have used the, the uh, with the asterisk, uh, right click asterisk, then you get the multiplication operator. And once it's there, we right click on the B pin, the second pin, and we say promote to variable. And we're going to call this variable max speed. So this is the maximum speed that our bike will uh, move at. And just to make sure we are not forgetting to provide the value to it, let's compile so it appears under default value. And let's give it a value of 2000, which I know because I've already tested it. But in your case, if you want to make the bike faster, of course, you just increase this value. If you want to make it slower, you decrease it. So let's uh, save and compile. And uh, what we're going to do then is uh, um, we don't want our bike to start and stop so to directly go to the maximum speed and then when we leave the button, go to zero speed immediately. So we're going to introduce a bit of interpolation. Okay. And uh, uh, the way to interpolate the flow is to use a function called finterp, namely finterp2. And as you can see, as I did that, um, this pin was connected to the wrong one because actually it needs to go to target. So I'm going to use the control key and then I can drag a pin and disconnect it for this and connect it to where it actually should be. And uh, so this is the target we want to interpolate to. 
The current is actually a new variable that we have to create. So I'm going to right click uh, promote the variable and call it current speed. So this is the current speed of the bike. The output of the interpolation has to be assigned back to the same variable. Okay. So what we're going to do is take current speed. If I drag it onto the execution pin, it becomes a set, which is very handy. So I'm going to drag it here all the way to the end. Maybe let's give ourselves a bit of room here. And then the return value of the finterp to we connect it to the variable itself. Uh, the other value that we need to set is delta time. So in delta time, we can retrieve it using the uh, delta seconds, so the get word delta seconds. And when it comes to interpolation speed, uh, let's use a value of four, which we pin in directly. And you can try in you know, a slightly different values and see how it behaves. Now, uh, this completes the throttle part. So we are able to set the current speed we want to move the bike at and uh, do it in a way that uh, it accelerates and then decelerates in a believable way. Let's actually do something similar also for the steering. So it's exactly uh, the same code, but of course using uh, own variables for the steering. So drag out of the axis value. Let's click the asterisk on the keyboard for multiplication. And uh, let's promote this to variable. So promote variable and this one will be the max steering angle. And also in this case, uh, to have a nice visual effect, let's uh, use a finter too. So that uh, when we press the steering button, the bike gradually steers toward the direction we are indicating. When we let it go, it gradually comes back. So drag out of here. Actually, let's do it differently this time. So we simply right click without dragging out and we write finter two. Now we know that this pin needs to co be connected to target. The current one, we right click and promote it to variable and we're going to call it current. Steering angle. For uh, get word delta seconds, we can simply take it from here so we can connect the two. I don't like this crisscrossing, but yeah, that, that's fine. Interpolation speed, let's use a, a four here as well. And you can, again, experiment uh, with different values. And then as we did above, we take the current steering angle, drag it onto the execution pin, which creates a set. And then the output of the finter two needs to be connected to that. So every thick we have an updated value. So this is what we need to uh, handle the input. Since we are at it, let's also add uh, the handling of the spring arm. So we go here on the right, uh, right click. Remember that the input axis were called look right. And right click again, look up. So now we have the two axis events. Let's drag from the hierarchy a reference to the spring arm. And uh, now out of it, uh, we want to call add relative rotation. And then control W to duplicate it because we want to do the same below. Now let's, uh, uh, for both of them, right click on the delta rotator and delta rotation, which is the input and choose split struct pin. So we have access to the single variables, the single dimensions of the delta rotator. Let's connect the two execution pins like this. And now out of the uh, look right, we want to connect to the yo, because that's allowing us to uh, pivot around the bike. And the look up actually connects to the pitch. So that allows us to look up or down uh, to the bike.
So this covers actually the ending of the spring arm. And if we compile and save and then close and play, well, we should be able to pivot with the mouse around the bike. So we see the bike in all its splendor. Um, but you know, if we press the input keys, nothing happens because we are not doing anything with the current steering angle and uh, the current speed values that we just set out of the input events. So that's what we need to do next. So escape to stop playing and let's reopen the motorbike blueprint. And now everything will happen pretty much on event tick. Okay, now bear with me because respect to the car, this is a tad more complicated because for the bike, we have a speed, uh, we have a steering angle, but we also have a lean angle. So we know that the bike leans when it's steering um, you know, into the curve, basically. So we want to derive that effect from the steering angle. And that makes our code a bit more complicated, but uh, yeah, not, not much. Let's start by using the speed that we have determined from the throttle to move the bike uh, through the world. So what we can do is uh, drag out of delta seconds and then multiply with the asterisk. Let me zoom in, otherwise it's too small. And now let's right click on the second pin, convert pin to vector. Because actually what we want to do is uh, um, take a right click, get forward vector. And actually the one that you want to select is get actor forward vector. That forward vector, we are going to multiply it. So I drag out of the yellow pin, which is a vector pin, and then press the asterisk for multiplication. And actually I need to convert this pin as well, but actually it will auto convert if I take the current speed, drag it onto the event graph and then connect it to it, it will automatically change that pin to, to float pin. And actually I'm realizing I need a bit more space, so I'm taking all the input handling that we just did and I'm moving it down so we have a bit of more room uh, to work with. Now with the get actor for a vector multiplied by the current speed, we're going to multiply that by uh, delta time. And this will represent our delta location. So what we can do is drag out of the event seek, and then we are going to say add actor word offset. And this is actually the delta location that we want to utilize when calling this function. Let's also make sure that sweep is ticked because that allows us to check for collisions. Maybe it's not needed at this point, but if you put on your track, for example, some obstacles or maybe another player, uh, you want uh, the movement to detect collisions and the way to do it is to activate, to enable the sweep flag. Okay, now the movement, it's uh, set up, but now we have to work on the rotation. So what I'm going to do is drag out of the execution pin and call a function called set actor relative rotation. And I will explain in a moment why we have to do that. Um, let's right click on the new relative rotation pin and uh, right click, uh, choose split struct pin. And you will see that uh, we have access now to the three components of the relative rotation. Now there are two components that we need to act upon. And let me zoom in. One is the roll and the roll basically controls the leaning of the bike. And then we have the yo, which controls the um, direction the bike is uh, pointing to, okay? And remember that this is related also to the forward vector. So as uh, we rotate the bike around its vertical axis with the U, the forward vector also rotates and that uh, makes the bike take a new direction, different direction. And the roll on the other end, as we said, is the one that controls uh, the leaning, so into the curve. 
Okay, how we address that part? And let me move also the begin play a bit up because we need more room. Is uh, um, the following way. So we take the current speed by dragging it from the variables onto the event graph. Let me zoom in. We divide it by the max speed. And what this does basically, uh, imagine it like this. If current speed is zero, this division has uh, an output of zero. If current speed is equal to max speed, which is the maximum speed we can have, uh, this division has an output of one. So basically, uh, this operation gives us uh, um, a range from zero to one, where zero means that the bike is basically stopped in place, so it doesn't have any speed. And one, it means that the bike is riding at its maximum speed. Now, if we take the steering angle, current steering angle, and we multiply it by this value, What we are doing with this basically is uh, um, defining a lean angle as the current steering angle times uh, that value between 0 and 1, which depends on the speed. So what happens with this is that if we make a turn at very high speed, the bike will lean with an angle which is equal to the current steering angle. If we make that same turn at a much lower speed, the bike will, uh, will lean less and less and less. And if the current speed is zero, uh, the bike will not lean at all because zero times whatever current steering angle is, is still zero. So this gives us a logic to determine how much the bike is leaning, depending on its speed and depending on its steering angle. So a combination of the two. And this value we are not going to apply as it is, but we are going to finterp. So right click, finterp. Why? Because we want the bike to have this nice progressive leaning depending on the speed and the steering angle. So we are connecting this to target. And by now you know how finterp works. And the delta time, drag out and write delta, get word delta seconds. So that's what we need there. Um, for the current leaning angle, so we right click on the current pin, promote the variable, and we're going to call this current lean, current lean angle. Now, what we do with this uh, current lean angle, we assign it to the X, and you remember that the role basically is the leaning axis of the bike. Okay, and then last but not least, every time that we use a finterp2, we need to take its output and reassign it back to the current variable so that it's updated for next tick. So let's take current lean angle, drag it on top of the execution pin of set actor relative rotation. That should make it a set, but it doesn't work in this case. So we drag it to the Event graph and we choose set current lean angle. Strangely, it doesn't work. It's a bug. And then this output value, we connect it to it and double click on the connection line to create a reroute pin and then move it in place to make it nicer. Okay, so we have determined with this code the lean angle of the bike. Um, we still have to determine the rotation of the bike depending on the steering. So how the bike changes direction depending on the steering. And as you know, maybe because you have watched the uh, kinematic car tutorial, we want to do this based on the speed and based on other conditions. So what we're going to do is um, take the current speed. And the idea is that um, the higher the speed and you know, the more you turn uh, for the same steering angle, of course, and then multiply with the asterisk by number of values. So the first one we want to multiply to is the current 
steering angle and of course this is what controls the change in direction primarily then let's click on this little plus to add another pin and uh, let's promote it with we'll right click promote the variable we're gonna call it speed to rotation factor and this is similar to what we already did for the car you might want to uh, look back at that one but basically this factor controls how much the speed uh, uh, and uh, together with the current steering angle is turned into the rotation of the bike okay now you want to play a bit with this value but uh, let's compile and save i can already tell you that a good starting point is 0 0.001 and this is what we'll use and again you can play with it and uh, try different values now also the rotation has to happen over time so uh, we have to multiply also by delta seconds which we have here but i don't like to drag a pin so long so i'm gonna just use the usual get word delta seconds um, and last but not least uh, you will see we'll need to add something to this later on because uh, when the bike moves backward we want the dynamic to be slightly different but uh, let's get to it in, in a moment okay now for the bike we have used a set actor relative rotation to control both the lean and uh, the relative rotation now since this is a relative rotation it has to be based off the previous of the current actually relative rotation okay so the way to do that, uh, so that this increments the current relative rotation, is to right click and say get actor rotation, which is down here. And with this, we uh, split the return value using a split struct pin. And we're only interested in taking the Z value. So we take the yo, we add to it our change in rotation which we just determine using um, the current speed the current steering angle the speed to rotation factor and the get word data second and then assign it to the z okay let's compile and save and also note that uh, instead of using set actor relative rotation we could have used set actor rotation altogether I would have worked in the exact same way okay doesn't matter because uh, since the actor doesn't have uh, it's not parented to anything we'll use directly uh, the word so that it will become a word rotation okay I think we are ready to try out our bike and then we will fix the problem with uh, uh, the reverse movement so let's compile and save and i wonder if uh, all the variables so max speed as a value yes 2000 the max steering angle we didn't give it a value to it uh, so let's use uh, um, 45 degrees uh, we already assigned a value to speed to rotation factor 0 0.001 so we are good to go uh, compile and save and now let's see how our bike is handling so let's play and click uh, to provide the input move forward with w now i'm standing still and i'm pressing a or d and nothing happens because the bike is not moving so it doesn't lean but as soon as i move and then i press the angles the bike is leaning okay one thing that I don't like much, maybe you like it, but I don't, is the fact that the camera is also bending with the bike. And that's up to you, uh, whether you like it, you can leave it like this, but I don't like it. So I'm gonna go back into the blueprint, uh, click on the spring arm, and here under camera settings, I'm going to uncheck roll, and pitch doesn't really matter, but, uh, um, the role will do what I want, which is disconnect the 
roll of the camera from the roll of the bike. So let's see how it looks like now. And now if we move forward, you see that the bike is leaning, but the camera is no longer rotating and I like it better. But again, if you prefer the previous one, you can just check that option again. Nice. And as you can see, we can also you know, look around our bike and see that it's leaning into the curve. And if I slow down, it leans less and less, and then it straightens itself directly. Okay. What we don't have yet is the animation of the bike, of course. So we're not using the speed and the steering angle to animate uh, um, now the steering of the bike and the wheels. So that's what we have to do next. First of all, let's uh, go under uh, bike and open the animation blueprint. I switch to the event graph. You remember the animation blueprint has two parts, is the event graph and the anim graph. So we switch to the event graph. Uh, we don't need the try get pawn owner, so we can uh, delete it. And now let's create under variable here, uh, two variables. So one is going to be the speed, uh, which we have to set by clicking here to float. And then plus let's create another one, which we call steering also float. Okay. We have to create other two variables. So let's do it right away. Uh, one is uh, the wheel radius and the wheel radius, as you remember, has a role. If you remember from uh, the climatic vehicle um, tutorial as a role in determining the rotational speed of the wheel based on its uh, linear speed. And then the other one that we need is the wheel rot angle. And this is what we're going to use eventually to animate the wheels. Okay. So connected to the event blueprint update animation, let's use the speed, get the speed divided by the wheel radius, which we haven't set yet, by the way. So right now it's going to be a division by zero, which is not good. So let's, um, we'll, we'll set this in a moment. And then let's take the delta time, multiply it by this value. And then we know that by doing this, we get uh, um, the delta rotation angle in radians. So we want to convert it to degrees because the animation blueprint is using degrees. So we use a function called rad to actually it's called radians to degrees. And now we add this to the uh, rotation angle. So we take the we rotation angle, add it to the delta value that we just determined. So that's the delta angle that we just determined. And then since it's an angle and the wheel you know, rotates uh, maximum 360 degrees, but then continuous, we want to use uh, the modulo function to limit the angle value between zero and 360. And this we can do by doing a module 360. And finally, this is the new value of the wheel rotation angle. So we can just assign it by dragging it uh, to the execution pin. It creates a set. And this value is the new rotation angle. Now, one thing to do and not to forget is to set the uh, wheel radius. Now, based on uh, this bike, and we can also look back at the physics asset, for example, I can tell you that uh, uh, will radius of 30 centimeters will do. So let's uh, click on the wheel radius and then under default, default value, assign it to here. And with this done, it's time to move uh, to the anim graph. So once we are in the anim graph, remember that we have basically three bones to control. So it's the bone for the rear wheel, it's the bone from the front wheel, and then it's the bone for the steering rack. Okay. So uh, right click and let's call the transform modify bone node. And let's connect it to the output pose and this will automatically create this component to local node, which is fine. Let's give ourselves a bit of room, click on the transform modify bone node. Now uh, transition we don't need 
So I'm going to uncheck expose bin and we'll make it disappear as well as the scale. We don't need that one either. So um, let's right click and uncheck it. Uh, we also don't need the alpha, but that's fine too. Leave there also aesthetically. Now, uh, what we want to do is uh, uh, assign the bone to modify. So that's going to be, uh, in this case, the wheeler rear. That's rather easy because it's not connected to the steering. So that's, um, we, we are not doing a double rotation in this case. What we want to do under rotation is uh, choose replace existing as a rotation mode. And rotation space, we want it to be bone space. Now, let's right click on the uh, rotation input, which is a rotator, and then split the struct pin. And we want to know actually around which axis this wheel is rotating. So one way to do it is um, to click on it. Uh, actually, let's move to the skeleton. Let's click on the wheel. Let's switch to the select and translate tool. And you see that the axis around which the wheel is rotating is the blue one. So that's the Z one, okay? So back to the animation blueprint, we know that we need to connect our wheel rod angle to the Z input, the Yo input, and the others can remain to zero, okay? Now this handles the rear wheel. Uh, we can do the same for the front wheel actually before we take care of the steering rotation. So let's click on the node, uh, Control W to duplicate it. Let's connect it by connecting these little guys here. Now with this node selected, we have to change the bone it's acting on. So it has to be the wheel front three. And there it goes. And then of course it uses the same wheel rotation angle because the wheels have the same radius. So they rotate in the exact same way. Select and Q to align. And this takes care basically of the um, front wheel as well. Now, what we want to do is uh, uh, add a third node. So with this select, and I'm going to do Control W, connect it. And this one will control the uh, steering rack. So let's check steering, uh, let's select steering two. Let's make sure that uh, it's replace existing and bone space. Uh, that's uh, already there because that's how we set it up earlier. Now this will be controlled by the steering angle. So we can drag the steering angle and do a get. And now the question is again, to which axis do we have to connect it? So let's go back to the skeleton. Let's click on the steering. And as you can see, it's rotating around the green axis. Uh, I don't know if it's clear from this picture, but if I rotate around, you will see it. It's rotating around the green axis. Okay. So what we want to do in the event graph is actually connected to the Y because that's the green. Okay. It, X is red, Y is green, and Z is blue. Perfect. So let's compile and save. And the cool thing about uh, an animation blueprint, of course, is that we can already play with it uh, in simulation. So if we go here under asset preview, let's check the steering. As you can see in the preview, we are steering right with a positive angle and we are steering left with a negative angle. So that's good. So if we give it speed, we should start seeing the rotation of the wheels. And with a positive speed, the wheels are rotating in the proper direction, which is good. And now let's combine also with the steering to make sure that the front is working as it should. And as you see, it continues to rotate properly, even though we are steering. So that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, with this done, uh, yes, we have compiled and save. Let's close the animation blueprint because basically it's all we needed. And the last thing that we have to do is to assign the speed and steering values from the blueprint into the animation blueprint. So
So let's uh, go back to our bike blueprint, open it, and here on event tick, after we have assigned uh, the current lean angle, let's retrieve a reference to the current speed. So variables, current speed, and also a reference to the animation instance, which we already created earlier on uh, begin play. And now the animation instance, we say set speed, and that's the speed variable we just created inside the animation blueprint, and we assign it the current speed to it. And for the uh, steering, we could actually do the same, but we will introduce a modification. So let me show you why. So that's the set steering that we want to add. Sorry, that we want to set uh, from within the animation blueprint. And now let's uh, uh, also use the current steering angle and assign it to it. Select both and do Q so they're all nice and aligned. Compile and save. And now we're ready to test. So let's close and do a play. And actually, You can see that uh, um, we play, there is no movement, and the reason is we forgot to do something. And what we forgot to do, and these errors are telling us, is to assign to the bike skeletal mesh the animation blueprint. So let's go down here. Under animation, uh, you find here future motorbike skeleton and in blueprint. Now it's assigned, which basically means that this cast was failing before we did that and this variable was invalid therefore Now it's going to be valid. So play. And you see I'm pressing the D button, so we're steering right. A button, we're steering left. And now I'm pressing the W, so we can move forward. And as you can see, When I steer, the bike is leaning into the curve and the steering is also visible, but it's actually too much for a high speed. So what I want to do is reduce the steering visually. I think physically it's nice, but visually it's not nice at all. And I want to reduce it so the higher the speed, the less the, the steering visually, and that makes sense also um, for a real bike, right? So the faster your speed and the less you have to steer to get into a curve. So what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, and you also saw when I released the button, W button also a nice slow down. Uh, by the way, our bike also drives backward and steers backward as well. So this might be atypical for a bike, but assuming that uh, you know the rider is on it, that will work. Let's uh, uh, press escape. Go back to our uh, motorbike blueprint. And actually, this is where we want to act uh, um, to reduce the steering at higher speed. So the way to do it is uh, let's Alt click to disconnect the current steering angle, which we are going still to use, but basically I want to use a node which is called map range clamped. So I'm right click map range clamped. And what this node does is it takes an input value. And in this case, we're going to use the current speed as input value. And then it uh, uh, maps it from a range which goes from zero to max speed because that's uh, what we have uh, when we are uh, riding. So uh, our current speed can maximum be max speed. And we want to map it to an output range, which goes from one, which basically means at zero speed, we have the full steering range, but at max speed, we have only a fraction of it. For example, 0 
and this one we are going to multiply so the output of this node we're going to multiply it by the current steering angle and that's what we're going to feed into uh, the set as the visual steering okay so what happens is that physically we're still using the current steering angle but visually we are reducing it depending on the speed so at maximum speed is going to be one fifth of the original and you can play a bit with these values see whether you uh, you know get a nicer effect for example but otherwise uh, that's what i like so compile and save play and now we see that uh, you know as we are standing still we still have the full steering range but as soon as we start riding uh, the steering is still there it's, it's very subtle but it's still there and i think it works now the part that i don't like at all is the motion blur on the wheels so what i'm gonna do is edit project settings uh, search for motion blur and i'm going to disable it globally okay i don't like this motion blur effect at all so with this done play and now we don't have the motion blur effect anymore and i can ride my bike in the track try to follow it and of course i am you know using the keys uh, to steer you can also use a gamepad for example it would be much smoother with the keys uh, um, yeah you might want to play a bit with the interpolation nodes that we put on the input to see whether you can get a nicer effect uh, of course uh, you can add to this bike uh, maybe a second camera you can uh, add uh, track detection uh, you can add the timer on the lap uh, all this it's included in the project that uh, it's linked in the description for a small fee if you like to buy it also helps me to keep these tutorials going there's one last thing that we want to do, which is um, when the bike is moving backward, I think that um, we want it to steer more because it bends more and it's like moved uh, uh, manually with your feet. So the way to do it is let's go back to the blueprint for the um, motorbike and we are going to add another multiplication value to this node here so let me let me click on the plus pin and then i want to uh, use a select node why we want to select because we want to distinguish between uh, the bike moving forward so that's when the speed is positive and the bike moving uh, backward and reverse that's when the speed is negative so if we take the current speed and actually we say is it less than zero? So are we moving in reverse? Let's connect this pin here so that the select updates. Well, if that's the case, we want the rotation to be faster. So we're going to put the two on the true. So multiplier of two under true. And if we're moving forward, the rotation stays as it is. So that's gonna be a one. Now, what we actually did is that uh, now we're moving backward. It's going to be a slightly faster rotation. And that's a bit um, um, what you experience when you are standing on the bike and then uh, manually you know, pulling it backward. And of course, also the speed should be reduced, but uh, let's not uh, get there. So in principle, the maximum speed when going backward should be much lower. And that's a normal bike, assuming that you are moving it with your feet. But otherwise, um, yeah, that's fine. So compile and save, let's play. And now we can see that we are moving backward. You know, the rotation is bigger and otherwise uh, we are moving forward. The rotation is the one that we established earlier. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know if you would like to see other type of vehicles or uh, you know, which kind of improvements you would like to see in uh, these tutorials overall. And otherwise, uh, uh, thanks for being with me and talk to you next time. Bye.